Dive gear is expensive, and that's why we've teamed up with Dive Right to bring you this series of videos based on gear maintenance. So we can help you make the investment in your dive gear last longer. And in this installment, we're focused on buoyancy compensating devices. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on and welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. It is so great to see all your smiling faces. We are back once again with the next in our series of videos on gear maintenance, brought to you by the good people at Dive Right who make equipment for serious divers. As with every video in this series, we will be giving away one piece of kit that we're talking about, and this week it's buoyancy compensating devices. I've been given by Dive Right this XT Travel Wing. Uh, super slim profile, lovely piece of kit. Any traveling diver would be happy to have this in their arsenal to throw in their luggage and go off on a warm water dive vacation somewhere. Hopefully we can get back to doing that next year. Um, so yeah, at the end of this video, I'll be telling you how you can enter to win this awesome travel wing. Right, let's dive in with the tips. We are coming to the business end of this series, which means the equipment is getting a little bit more complicated. That being said, we've already covered a lot of the parts of the BCD in the harness and backplate episode last time out. So I'm not going to focus on taking care of the webbing. I showed you how to treat any kind of fraying issues with the webbing. And those tips apply if you have a single piece BCD like the Hydrolite where the harness is built in. You can just apply those tips. Same with cleaning the stainless steel. What we're really going to focus on in this episode is the bladder. Now a buoyancy compensate device does its job through the use of an air cell. Now that can either be a separate PVC or laminate bladder in the case of a wing, or it can be the actual cell itself in the style of a one piece BCD or jacket style BCD. Both of them do the same thing. They're designed to be an inflatable and deflatable balloon style that have a series of valves so you can control the amount of gas that you're putting into your buoyancy compensate device. Now the challenge there is that the conditions inside that bladder are essentially the perfect environment for growing nasties, bacteria, viruses, fungus, all that good stuff. It's dark, it's moist, it's usually warm, uh, and it has an anaerobic environment. So all of that kind of festering needs to be taken care of so that your PCD doesn't rot from the inside out. The first thing you're gonna wanna do after every dive, doesn't matter if it's fresh water or salt, is make sure that you've got the water that's seeped into your BCD out. Okay, so you're gonna empty it of any water that's seeped in. How does water get into your BCD? Well, anytime you hold this hose up and press the deflate button, air comes out, but also water can go in. So the more adjustments you make to your buoyancy during a dive, the more water is eventually gonna get into your wing. Now that does get displaced when you put gas back into it and hit the deflate again, it'll flush some of the water out, but there's a constant exchange of water coming in, gas coming in, gas coming out, water coming out. We wanna make sure we get any kind of pond water, lake water, spring water, or ocean water out of the wing first. And the best way to do that is by inflating the BCD as best you can, holding it upside down so that the power inflator is at the lowest point, and pressing the deflate button. You can do this a couple of times, inflate it again, empty it out, inflate it again, empty it out to make sure there's no nasty water left inside the BCD. Then what we're gonna to wanna to do is clean that out with fresh water, and also I recommend Steramine. We haven't talked about Steramine yet in this series of videos, but that's a massive tip, let me tell you about it. Steramine comes in a tablet form, and it's basically a food contact surface sterilizing agent. If you've ever worked in hospitality, you should be very, very familiar with this, particularly bartenders who use this in the glass rinse sink to kill any nasties on glasses before they go back into service. One tablet per gallon of water. Great, okay, so if we break the tablets in half, use a half gallon of water, that should be more than enough to rinse the inside of our BCD system. But how are we gonna get that solution in there? Well, what I suggest you do is take a, a gallon jug, drop a tablet into it, half a tablet, half gallon, whatever, and pour it in through the overpressurization valve. Now, you've gotta be super careful when removing an overpressurization valve because it is plastic. It's plastic threaded, and if you put it on a skew, you'll cross thread the OPV, and then the whole piece is basically useless. They're not very easy to change out. You also have a rubber seal in there, which is spring loaded. So you wanna make sure that as you unscrew it, it doesn't pop off and fly off somewhere. 
But then that gives you access to the bladder inside. You can pour some steramine in there, move the wing around, get that steramine liquid up and down all the way through it. Hold it so that you've got the power inflator to the lowest point and drain it out through the power inflator. That's also going to sterilize all the way through the valve system there. My other top tip then to rinse out the BCD with fresh water is to use one of these special hose adapters. So on one end you have a garden hose, on the other end you have a low pressure inflator coupling. You link the low pressure inflator coupling up to your low pressure inflator, the other end to your garden hose, hit the inflate button and hey presto you've got fresh water flowing through your power inflator assembly up through the corrugated hose rinsing all of that out and filling your bladder with fresh water. Then you can simply dump it out through the overpressurization valve, which rinses the stainless steel spring inside there. Now let's talk about low pressure inflators. These are complicated valve assemblies and I'm not gonna recommend anyone to disassemble these on their own. Even mechanically minded people get turned around with the complicated assembly in here and there's a lot of moving parts. And if you get it wrong with reassembly, you've basically screwed up the whole LPI. What I can recommend you do is make sure that you get your BCD serviced by an authorized service technician. This is incredibly important. So no matter which brand of BCD you're buying, check out the manufacturer's recommendations for how often these things should be serviced and have a professional do it. And that way, if they screw it up, you're protected. But I will tell you this, the low pressure inflator assembly is changeable. So if it gets so bad that you've neglected this and you've got sand in the deflate button or in the inflate button and it's just a little bit gritty and grindy and the, the buttons are getting sticky, that's not a good situation. You don't want to end up in an auto inflate situation. The whole unit can be changed out. So it doesn't mean you have to throw away your whole BCD, but again, take it to your authorized service technician. Same goes with the dump valve on the shoulder or the overpressurization valve on the shoulder. Get that serviced by an authorized service technician. I don't recommend that's something that the average diver tackles at home. Now, both of these pieces of kit look lovely and shiny and brand new. This one is brand new, it's our prize for this week. This one, I've already done about 150 dives on it. What, you've done 150 dives on this, it looks brand new. I know, it's because I clean it. And the best way to clean the outside of the BCD is just with a very mild detergent, just some dish soap, some soapy water and a sponge and just give it a good clean over. You can see that logo still looks brand new and shiny and it just keeps your gear looking nice and fresh. I have a friend who's a dive instructor close by where I live, who has a BCD that's 25 years old and it looks brand new and he's dived it every single day since he bought it. It looks immaculate because he cleans it and he takes care of it. Let's talk about storing the BCDs then. If you have a one-piece BCD like this that comes with a built-in harness, I highly recommend investing in a BCD-specific hanger that's just going to help it hold its shape. Store it hanging up if you have the space to do so. If you have a wing like this, you're gonna to wanna to store it flat on a shelf, take it apart if you've got a single tank adapter or a backplate and harness, absolutely disassemble the whole thing and have them flat on a shelf. Highly recommend that these are stored at room temperature to avoid either freezing cold, which can cause the plastics to become brittle, or extreme heats like we have in garages here in Florida, where the chances are it's gonna corrode the plastic and the rubber elements of these pieces. I also recommend that you store them with some air in, particularly the wing style that has a separate bladder on the inside, just so that the two parts are separated and there's some air circulation going on on the inside. I wanna say thank you again to Dive Right for sponsoring this series of videos. Truly a boutique dive manufacturer out there who make quality equipment for serious divers. Massive fan, couldn't be happier to be partnering with you. And if you guys are enjoying this series of videos, if you're getting value out of it, don't tell me. Tell Dive Right. The best thing you can do to support our channel is to support our sponsors. So in the description of this video below are the links to all of Dive Right's social media channels. Go over there, throw them a like, throw them a subscribe, throw them a follow, and let them know that James at Dive is Ready sent you. If you would like to win this fantastic slimline travel wing, the Travel XT from Dive Right, there is a link in the description of this video below where you can enter the contest to win it. It will run for one month and we will post the winner on our Divers Ready's Instagram account. We have one video left in this series and you've probably guessed by now, it's regulators. So we're gonna be giving away a Dive Right regulator in the last installment in this series of videos. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. That video will drop in two weeks time. Until then, my name's James. Thank you so much for watching. This was your gear maintenance video for this week from Divers Ready. Dive safe, dive often.